Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, what we're going to do is install Ubuntu 2504. This is a tutorial for those of you that want to ditch Windows or just check out Linux in general, and you want to get Ubuntu installed. What I'm going to do is show you the process every step of the way. What we're going to do is create our installation media. We're going to run through the installation process. And by the end of this video, you'll have your very own Ubuntu installation ready to go. And it's fun to do installation videos. I love to teach you guys Linux and show you the process of various things. And every time a new version of Ubuntu comes out, I like to release an installation video for that version. As an added effect, it's kind of cool to go back to the older videos and see how the installer has changed over the years. But in this video, we're going to be installing Ubuntu 2504 and it's going to be a ton of fun. But before we dive in, there's something really cool that I've created recently that I want to let you guys know about. And that is the ultimate Linux commands cheat sheet. It's packed with the most used commands, my personal favorite terminal hacks, some handy bash aliases, and even a few tips to help harden your servers. For a small donation of just $3, you could grab a copy and keep it as your go-to Linux reference. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned admin, it's designed to save you time and keystrokes. And while you're there browsing my shop, feel free to check out the other stuff that I have available there as well. You can visit the URL that you see on the screen to support me and buy yourself something nice. And also, there's a link in the description as well. Anyway, with that out of the way, it's time to dive in and install Ubuntu 2504. So let's do that right now. To begin, let's talk about what we'll need in order to get started. And first, you'll need a backup. The process of installing Ubuntu will wipe out your entire drive. So be sure that you back up anything and everything that's important before we go any further. Grab a backup drive or connect to your NAS and make a copy of anything you'd prefer to keep around. Learn Linux TV is not responsible if you make a mistake and purge something that you didn't intend to. Of course, this all probably goes without saying, but it's important to err on the side of caution. Anyway, there's three phases when it comes to installing a Linux distro. First, you'll create install media, and then you'll test everything to make sure that Ubuntu actually works on your computer. Once you do that, we'll go through the installation process. To create installable media, you could use a tool called Etcher. There's a few other utilities that do the same thing, but Etcher is what I've been using personally. It's a free utility that can convert a flash drive into install media for just about any distro. It's available for all the common operating systems, so you can run it from whatever platform you're currently on. The process will erase your flash drive completely, so be sure that you use one that has nothing important on it. The first thing you'll do is download the utility. I'll leave a link in the description down below where you could grab Etcher and you'll also need to download Ubuntu itself. To do so, you go to the URL that you see on the screen and choose to download Ubuntu 2504, which is the latest version as of the time I'm recording this. If a newer version is available, you could go ahead and download that instead, but keep in mind the installation process might change from one version to the next. What you'll end up with is an ISO file, and what we'll do is open up Betcher and then select the Ubuntu install image that we downloaded earlier. We'll also choose a flash drive that we intend to use, and then we'll click the flash button. Once you do that, the process will take some time to complete, and when it does, all you need to do at this point is boot your computer with the flash drive inserted. As your computer starts, you could press the appropriate key to access your boot menu, and this varies from one computer to the next, but a popular boot key is F12, F7 on some models, so when in doubt, try those first. If those don't work, you could consult the manual for your computer to find out what the correct boot key is. And what you're seeing right here is the Ubuntu installer. It's the first thing that'll appear when you boot from the install image, but what we're actually going to do right now is close it. So I'll just click right here. And what that's going to do is start live mode. At this point, Ubuntu has not been installed on our computer and no changes have been made. But what's really cool about live mode is that you could use your computer with Ubuntu in demo mode just to see if it works. It's going to run a bit slower off the flash drive than it would if it was installed on your actual computer, but in live mode, you could do basically anything. We can access applications that are pre-installed. We can also launch applications just to make sure that everything works. Another thing that I recommend that you do is connect to Wi-Fi and make sure that your Wi-Fi card works if you have one. To do that, what we'll do is go up here to the system control menu, we'll click on it, and right here we have a selection for Wi-Fi. What we want to do is click this right arrow right here to select a Wi-Fi network 
and we're going to make sure that we're able to connect. So I'll type in my password and click connect. And as you can see, the Wi-Fi icon lit up and we are connected right now. To verify that, I'll open up a web browser. And then what we'll do is just try to access any website. I'll just go to mine right now, just to make sure that everything works. And as you can see, I am online. You definitely don't want to install Ubuntu until you verify that all of your hardware works. We just verified that Wi-Fi works. Another thing to try is a secondary display. If you have one, if that's important to you, make sure you connect that, ensure that it works. You could also test your sound card, make sure that you have volume. So I could click on any one of these videos right here to double check that audio is working. And once you feel that everything is working to your satisfaction, we can go ahead and install it. Now the thing is though, we definitely don't want to install Ubuntu at all unless our hardware works. Sometimes I see people in forums that have installed Ubuntu and something's not working. You should definitely know what's working and what's not working before you install it. If for some reason something isn't working, for example, you're not able to connect to Wi-Fi, and a really common symptom of that is you might not have any networks listed here at all, even though you know for sure that you have some in your area. If that happens, your Wi-Fi card might not be supported. It might need a special driver. You just want to know what you're in store for, and all you really have to do if you do have a problem is Google the model of your computer and then the keyword Ubuntu, and you'll probably find some information that'll tell you what you need to get things working. Most of the time, things work out of the box in Ubuntu, so not very many people will have this problem, but we definitely want to make sure that everything works before we install it. On my end, I know that everything is working, so what I'll do is bring the installer back up, and I'll do that by double-clicking this icon right here. And here again is the Ubuntu installer. Now the first screen right here is going to ask you to choose the language for the installer. So I'm just going to leave it on English. If you speak a different primary language, you could go ahead and select that here. There's quite a few on the list, as you could see. Mine defaulted to English, so I'll leave that well enough alone and click Next. And here we have accessibility features for those of you that might benefit from this. So if any of these are relevant for you, you can go ahead and select those here. I'm going to click Next. Now we're choosing the keyboard layout. It already asked us for a language earlier. That was for the installer. But right now, what we're doing is choosing our keyboard layout. It's auto-detected mine as English US. But if you plan on using a different region keyboard, you can select that right here. Another thing you could do is just type into this box right here just to make sure that everything works. There's no functionality here other than being able to type. It just gives you an opportunity to test your keyboard. And once you're sure that it works, we'll click Next. I'm already connected to Wi-Fi. I did that earlier in this section, but if I hadn't connected to Wi-Fi yet, I have another opportunity to do that right here. And it's a good idea to do that because the installer might need to install some updates. You could always do those later, but if you could get them done earlier, that's even better. I'm already connected, so I'll click Next. And now we get an option to use the interactive installation mode or the automated installation mode. I'm not going over the automated installation mode in this video. I might consider that for a future video, but what I'm going to do is just leave it on interactive installation and click next. This screen right here is asking us if we want the default selection of software or the extended selection. For most of you, I recommend that you choose the extended selection. This selection right here is more of a minimal mode. You'll get a web browser, some basic utilities, but not much else. With the extended selection, you'll get even more software. For example, Office Tools, like it says right here. So if I go to the Applications menu here, you'll see that I have quite a few applications installed, and this gives you an idea of what the extended mode is like. Notice that I have LibreOffice right here. Um, that's a very popular Office suite. We have a text editor. Basically anything you would ever need when it comes to basic usage of your computer. So if you type Office Documents, for example, you'll get LibreOffice, which I'm opening right now. And if you've ever used a word processor before, it's basically the same idea. This is what you'll get in the extended mode. And that's why I chose that right here. But if you don't need all of that software, you could just leave it on the default, and that's totally fine.
Click Next. On this screen, it's asking us if we want to install some recommended proprietary software. Proprietary in this case means the software is not open source like the rest of Ubuntu. So some of you might care about that. Others might not care about it as much. I actually recommend that you select both of these boxes right here because there's a much higher chance that your hardware is going to be better supported. For example, for NVIDIA users, most of the time you'll have a open source driver that's not quite as capable, but in this case, we're going to want the actual NVIDIA driver if that's what you have, but it's not just about NVIDIA. This includes all kinds of extra software drivers that you might need. It just makes compatibility that much better. And then when it comes to multimedia codec support, like you see MP3, MP4, and so on, if you have any of those types of files, you'll definitely want to check this box. But there's no harm in selecting both of these boxes if you don't think you'll need these kinds of things. You might need them later, especially if you add additional hardware to your computer later. For example, if you have a computer with onboard graphics, but you think you're going to later on buy an NVIDIA card, then you'll already have that here. Anyway, we'll click Next. And what we're going to do right now is erase disk and install Ubuntu. I'm going to assume that you've heeded my warning earlier about creating a backup of all of your important stuff. So what we'll do is click Next, and we'll continue along. Now, when it comes to encryption, it's highly recommended that you encrypt your computer because that way, if it were to get stolen or something like that, then the person stealing your computer can't access your personal files. I'll leave that up to you. If you select this option right here, it's going to ask for a password when you start your computer. But this is just a demo on my end. I'm not ever going to save anything on this computer. In fact, I'm going to wipe it before the next recording session. So there's really no point in me encrypting it. But if you plan on using your computer for daily use, I do recommend that you encrypt it. And nowadays, the performance difference is pretty much imperceivable. You shouldn't notice any downside at all by encrypting your computer other than entering a password when you start it up. We'll click Next. And then here what we're going to do is fill out information for our user account. I'm just going to type my name right there, keep it simple. And for the password, I type that here. And this is going to be the password that you log in with. Right here, we have a setting for requiring your password to log in. This is selected by default and it is recommended. This just basically means that in order to use your computer, you're going to have to enter your password to log in. But if you're setting up an internet kiosk at a coffee shop or something like that, then you're probably not going to want to be bothered by all of your clientele for the password every five minutes. In which case, if you're doing something like that, you'll uncheck this. But for most of you, you'll definitely want to keep that checked. Click Next. Here, we're selecting our region. Now, in my case, it's detecting Eastern time, so I'm fine. But basically, what you could do is just click on this map to try to find your actual geographic location. That just sets your time zone and things like that. So it's really important to do that. In my case, it detected it properly. I am on the Eastern time zone. I'm not in New York City, but it's close enough. It's the right time. So I'll click Next. And here we could see all of the options that we've chosen so far. Now we might see some extra partitions here that aren't really anything to do with our computer. This is my actual hard disk right here for this computer. I have some other volumes attached. We're going to ignore those, but it says unchanged for those. But for my main drive right here, it's going to be formatted and Ubuntu is going to be installed on that drive as well. So what we'll do is click install. And now we simply wait. The process shouldn't take all that long to complete, but what I'll do is fast forward this in post-production to save you the time. And it looks like we're done. So what we'll do right now is click restart now to restart our computer. And what should happen now is it'll boot into our brand new Ubuntu installation. So let's do it. At this point, it's telling us to remove the flash drive, so that way it doesn't boot back into the installer again, which I've done, and then we'll press Enter. All right, so we're booting up. All right, so what I'll do is click on my username, and then I'll type in my super secret password. Press Enter. And here we are. So it says, Welcome to Ubuntu 2504. 
So what I'll do is click next right here. It's just going to take us through a few things. Now Ubuntu is downloaded for free. So if you want to share system information with Ubuntu to help compatibility, you could go ahead and do that. What I'll do here is click show first report so you can get an idea of what's actually in that report. So as you can see, it's information about my computer model. Nothing here is personally identifiable. Some people accuse Ubuntu of phoning home with personal information, but as you can see right here, all it's really interested in is my screen resolution, my time zone settings, the type of computer that I have. So it's a good thing to send this along to the Ubuntu team to help them out, but if you don't want to do that, you can opt out by clicking right here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is the first time that I've ever installed a Linux distribution on this particular computer, so I think that might be helpful for them. I'll click Next. And right here, it's letting us know that we can open up the App Center to install software. I'll show you that shortly. But what I'll do is click Finish. And here we have our Ubuntu installation ready to go. Now you'll notice right here, I'm already connected to Wi-Fi. Because I typed in the password during installation, it retained that and that persisted into the installed environment. So as you can see, I am connected. At this point, what you could do is open up the App Center right here. And here we have the Ubuntu App Center. And you can think of this like an app store. There's all kinds of different applications that you can install. We have categories here on the left. And you could also search for an application if you know the name of it. So what I'll do is search for Steam. And then I'll click Install. It's literally that easy. And now, as you can see, Steam is installing. You can install as many applications as you have hard drive space for. There's all kinds of really cool things here that you could download. I'll just go ahead and let this finish. As you can see, it's installed, and we can open the application right from here. But actually, whenever you install an application in Ubuntu, it shows up here in the application menu. And as you can see, we have Steam as an icon, so I can click on that. And here we have Steam. I'm not going to sign into my Steam account. This computer isn't really good for gaming anyway, but I wanted to show this for those of you that do use Steam. And before I close out the video, there's one more thing that I want to bring your attention to. If you go to the application menu, the first thing you'll see right here is additional drivers. Now, during installation, we did choose additional drivers to be installed, but you should just double check to make sure that you don't need to install any drivers. Sometimes you might see an NVIDIA driver here for download. That might be relevant for those of you that actually have an NVIDIA card. I don't. In my case, it says no additional drivers available. And what that actually means is that all the hardware on this computer is supported by Ubuntu out of the box with no driver installation being necessary. I just recommend that you check this just in case there is a driver that you might benefit from. Something that might happen down the road is you might add additional hardware to your computer, even a scanner or a printer or something like that. You might find a driver for it right here in this application, which will save you the trouble of going out and downloading it. Anyway, with all that said, Ubuntu has been successfully installed on our computer, and I hope you enjoy it. And there's our video. In this video, we set up Ubuntu 2504 on our computer, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you're new to Linux, it's going to be a ton of fun. Happy to have you on board. Welcome. But now you have your own Linux installation, so that's really awesome. Anyway, I have other videos to create for you guys. I'm always creating new Linux content, so I'm going to take care of that right now. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.